Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting puppy clowning around <laughs> and I'm sipping on some wild berry tea and if you enjoyed this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, cobalt blue, fluorescent purple, deep yellow, fire red, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you're painting along with me. You'll also want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white and brown. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be painting the majority of it with white, and then I'll be adding a little bit of darkness down at the bottom just to give it a little bit of dimension going down towards the surface where our adorable clown is gonna be standing. I'm gonna start with white paint up at the top, and I'm just gonna be applying it in a left to right brush stroke. This may sound kind of silly for me to be painting a white canvas with white paint, but there is a, a reason for doing so, which is when you purchase a canvas um, that is pre-primed, such as mine, mine already has a white layer on it, that primer coat is not intended to be the final layer of the painting. It is, it, it's chemically, the composition of the, the uh, primer is intended to allow for the paint, the acrylic paint or whatever other paint you're using, to adhere to the surface of the cloth of the canvas. So if you do want to have a white background or a white painting, you'll want to make sure that you add an additional layer of paint on top of that primered coat and or make sure that you finish the painting with a layer of varnish or something to seal it in because if you leave just this raw primered canvas what will end up happening is it won't age properly it because it'll be affected by the light by the uv rays it'll be affected by dirt and dust and all kinds of other stuff so you'll want to if you if you don't want to paint it just make sure that you finish it with a varnish of sorts or you can do as i do and just paint it with white acrylic paint and that'll act as a nice protective coating for it so now that i am just about finished getting the white paint on all the way down at the bottom. I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of brown paint in order to get this bottom to go a little bit darker. So I've got it all on here now. Now what I'm gonna do on my dirty brush is I'm picking up a little bit of brown paint and I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a tannish or light tannish type of color down at the bottom. My white was 
still wet. So this just allows me to intermingle it with the white, get it to have a nice soft blend. And then I just kind of keep working it to get it to, to blend in as much as I want. You're hardly going to notice this when the, when the painting is completed, but it does add for that bit of dimensional, the atmospheric dimensional element to happen with, um, with the lightness at the top and that little bit of tan at the bottom. And then what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using our pencil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your pencil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our clown. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable for you. I'm just gonna use a pencil because it's easy to erase if I make mistakes. So I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that, this, that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers. We're going to be connecting those markers. We're going to be making some really basic shapes in order to create this fun character or this fun Halloween costumed puppy. <laughs> um, I am not going for any fine-tuned detail here. I just need to have some nice basic shapes that I'll be able to utilize during my coloring and process of painting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start you or us <laughs> in the middle of the canvas and we're just going to kind of work our way out with markers. There's a lot of different shapes in this particular drawing, so I'm gonna start with a kind of an anchoring line. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a <laughs> frog in my throat. A little, we're gonna start with kind of an anchoring line and then we'll build everything off of that. So I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, that's right about in through here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up about an inch to an inch and a half and go to the left of that about three inches. Make myself my first marker in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the center. I'm gonna go all the way over to the right hand side of my canvas until I'm about a half of an inch to an inch away from the edge and then come down about an inch. Make myself another line, another marker. I'm gonna connect this marker to this marker with a long wavy line. This is going to represent the bottom of the ruffle that's going to be around the neck of my, oops, there goes my pencil. I need to dry off my pencil first. All done. So this is going to represent the bottom of the neck ruffle on our costume. So I'm going to take this here and then just kind of give myself this real just kind of bumpy wavy line in through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the main, um, body costume part down in through here. So I'm gonna come in from this line, maybe about an inch and a half, make myself a marker right in through there. This is the center of my canvas right here. I'm gonna to go to the left of that about an inch and a half, give myself another mark, inch, inch and a half, give myself another marker here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel down from this marker till I am about three to four inches away from the bottom of my canvas and go out to the left about an inch, somewhere in through here. Going to do a similar exercise on this one. Come straight down from here. I'm going to go a little bit farther than that, so maybe right about here, and then I'm just going to kick it out to the right just a little bit. I'm going to connect here to here and here to here. This one I'm going to connect with a wavy line, something like that. And then this one, <clears throat> excuse me, I will connect also with a wavy line, something like that. I'm going to connect these two with a similar r ripply line like I had up there. So I'm going to take this and then just kind of give myself some wavy little ripples in through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, the rest of this ripple. So this is going to be maybe about an inch and a half or an inch wide. I want to make sure that I leave enough space between this ruffle at the bottom of the costume for the boots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of give myself a couple little markers. So maybe about an inch away from there and then maybe about an inch away from here. Just so I know, don't really go too much farther than that. And now I can connect my, um, my ruffle. I'm going to 
have this one kind of going around the edge of the costume. So I'm going to come up here just a little bit. I'm going to give myself a little ruffled edge in through here, going to connect to my marker here, and then just kind of ride it almost at the same width that I have up in through there. It doesn't have to be exactly, just you know, something that's going to represent a little bit of a ruffle. Once I get to here, this marker that I just made, I'm going to come out just a little bit further and then swing it back up into here. So I gave myself two different looking edges on the sides. I'm going to give myself a little tail in through here. You, if you're doing a different kind of dog than mine, you can certainly make a bigger tail or a smaller tail, but just having a cute little tail to represent this puppy. And then I'm going to put my boots on. So this is about the center of my canvas, somewhere in through here. I'm gonna to come to the right of that about an inch, and a, inch, inch and a half for, this is gonna be a big boot coming over here and I'm gonna come out and through here. I'm gonna make this, this, is, this boot is kind of like looking to the side. So I'm gonna bring this up in through here like that's the big front part of my clown boot and then I'm almost gonna just ride it along the bottom of my canvas, maybe like a quarter inch away I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit and this is gonna represent like the heel of the, the boot, something like that. The other foot is looking right at the camera. So I'm gonna come about two inches to the right of here, right in through there. And then I'm almost directly below this marker in through here, somewhere in through here. And I'm just gonna give myself a couple of curved lines going out from these markers in through here. So something like that. And that's all I'm going to do for the shoes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, the, the neck piece for um, that's underneath the head. Actually, I think I'm going to, I'm going to create my, um, my puppy head first. So that way we have somewhere to put the neck piece around. So I'm going to come, uh, here's the center of my canvas. I'm going to come to the right of that about an inch and a half to two inches. And then, that's about two inches and then up about an inch. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a marker there. Then I'm gonna come sh um, straight up from that, about halfway between that and the top of my canvas. So somewhere about here. Just give myself a little marker. Gonna to go to the right of that, about three inches marker, and then to the left of that, about two inches, and give myself a little bit of a marker. I'm gonna connect these two to here. This is gonna be an oval type of a shape. I'm going to have my puppy is going to be looking a little bit to the, his head's going to be tilted a little bit. So as I give this oval type of a shape, I'm going to be tilting it just a little bit. So I've got this in through here. I'm going to come down in through here. And then right about here is where I'm going to kind of flatten out. This will be like the muzzle part in through here. And then I can bring it back up in through here. It doesn't have to be super duper curved, but this will just give us a start. I didn't close off the top because the hair is going to go there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little puppy ear on in through here. So I'm going to just bring this down and curl it back up and I'm going to stop right about here. So this is short, shy or short of where that is. And then on the right hand side, I will start my little puppy ear somewhere in through here. And this one's going to be a little bit lower than this one. Again, to speak to the, the head being tipped like this. And I'm going to bring this one almost up as or probably just about as tall as that one. And it ends about an inch away from the edge of my canvas. So somewhere in through here. Now I can put the ruffle on the um, underneath the head. I'm going to come down this puppy ear just a little bit in through here and I'm going to connect here to here with a ripple and then I'm going to come up this ear a little bit right in through here and connect here to here with another little ripply line. I'm going to do one more ripple line. It's going to be about halfway between here and here. So I'm going to take this from here and I'm going to give myself a ripple line something like that. Now I'm going to put the hat on. I'm putting the hat on before I put the hair on so that way we can work the hair around it. I'm going to have my hat kind of crooked so I'm going to come up from my this marker in through here about I would say three inches. So you want to just kind of make give yourself enough room to the top of your canvas. Your hat does not need to be the same as mine. You can really make it whatever way that you want. I'm just having kind of a, a flat black hat, but you can make yours whatever you want. I'm going to um, now come to the right 
of this till I'm about maybe two inches away from here and then about halfway between here and the top of my canvas, somewhere in through here. I'm giving you a little pointers for the it edges of the, the rim of the hat. I can come back to this marker in through here and travel out till I'm right about here, which is almost as far out as I have the this edge in through here, and then up about an inch, somewhere in through there. I'm gonna connect here to here to here with a the edge of my, you know what? Actually, I think I want this in a little bit. I think I want it in. I think I want my hair out this far. There we go, that works. I'm gonna connect here to here and back up to here. I'm gonna bring this around in a little curve like that bring this around in a little curve like that. And now I can put my hat, the top part of my hat. So I'm just gonna bring mine up like this and kind of ride it along a similar type of way as that and bring it down like this. Again, yours doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. You can shape it whatever way that you'd like. Now I can put the hair on. I'm gonna come up this curve a little bit somewhere in through here. It's gonna hit this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point up in through here. It's all ripply. So here I go. I'm gonna start in through here. I'm gonna ripple this. I'm gonna meet this point in through here. This is the only point that I'm not gonna hit, this little center one. I might have said I was gonna hit that, but I didn't mean I was going to. I'm gonna go up in through here and I'm gonna come back down to this little ear. I, you can even drop it down, have fun with it. This is just fluffy, ripply clown hair, something like that. You can now erase that little marker if you need to or want to. I'm gonna draw a couple of flowers. So I've got mine just kind of coming out my hat. I'm just gonna give myself um, these curved lines for the, for the stems. Maybe this one goes up here and comes back over on this side. And then I'm just gonna give myself some fun, um, generic, you know, circular type of petal flowers. You can certainly make yours into whatever you like. And then that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. You could certainly do any modifications or adjustments that you want. We're gonna be using our large brush for the next step so you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for the hat, the fur, the clothing, and the boots. I'm gonna be using my big brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, yellow, and red. And before I start this step, I did notice <laughs> before I came to this step that I forgot to draw a circle for my nose. So I'm grabbing my pencil. I'm gonna draw a circle for my nose before I start this step. So you might wanna draw your circle for your nose as well. So now that I've got that, I'm going to take my large brush and I'm gonna put black paint on it. I'm gonna start with the base coat for my hat. You could certainly create any color for any of these objects that you want. You could even use a different paintbrush. So I like to use minimal um, tools and sometimes I use larger brushes than you know some people are comfortable with. So as you're going through your process, if you're finding that you want to use a smaller brush or a different color, it's your painting. You get to customize this to whatever works for you. I know that I'm gonna be doing highlights and all kinds of other details on these objects, so if I don't get the edges super clean with this big brush, when I go to do the next step on it, I can clean it up. So that's gonna be my black hat. I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna go in for my fur. So I'm gonna be doing the base coat for my fur with brown paint. So again, just putting brown paint on my brush. I've got my ears. I do know that I've got you know a whole bunch of ruffles that are gonna happen on, or um, fluffiness that's gonna happen on the clown hair, wig, whatever you wanna call that. So again, not terribly concerned if this is perfect at this point. I just really am looking to get a nice coat on here that I'll be able to work with for my for my details. As I So if I'm bumping into my pencil mark, I'm okay with that. That pencil mark is just there to give me a guide to have me stop go, you know, and not paint too far. I don't even need this to be a perfect coat around the nose. I'm just kind of getting a thin layer of this brown on here. So 
again, I can have a good base to build my fur with. And then I'm just kind of making sure I've got the whole thing covered in here. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna pick up yellow paint. And this is gonna be this entire center section. I can lay it on pretty, pretty heavily. I, again, I know that um, this is just the first coat. So in a color like this and with the brown, you, you will see a streakiness to it. You can see right where you can see the pencil underneath. It's transparent or translucent, which means you can, you can see certain colors underneath it. You'll be able to see my pencil underneath it, which again is, oh, oh I just picked up a little bit of black in through there, um, which is okay that you can still see the pencil because again, we've got lots of steps left to go that will help to hide those things. I'm using a vertical type of brush stroke in through here just because I know that it's cloth and it's probably gonna be, it would make sense for me if I did still have um, some light spots and dark spots, the vertical brush stroke is gonna make it appear as if the um, fabric maybe just has vertical wrinkles to it. So that helps when you're um, using a transparent paint like this, if, there, if a directional brush stroke can assist in making it look more natural, you can certainly apply that. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I noticed I didn't do my tail either, so I'll get to that in a second. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up back, pick up um, brown paint again, so I can just hit this little tail in through here. So just a little bit of brown paint. The tip of my tail is gonna be nice and fluffy, so I'm just gonna kind of bring that out like that. And then I'll wash and dry my brush and put red on it for my boots. Again, you could certainly, you could have purple boots or black boots, whatever color you want. I'm just going for some red paint here. So I loaded my brush with red paint and my directional brush stroke doesn't really matter on my shoes because I know I've got lots of layers um, to go on them which will definitely hide any um, any streakiness to them, but I'm gonna just bring it right to my, um, my ripply cloth area, bring it all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna be putting a black sole on, the, on this particular boot. So again, that edge that is um, the exterior edge, if it's not perfect, it's all right. And then once you've got this step done, we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. Just getting my little edge to my boot over and through here. And then I'm gonna put this large brush away, take out my medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our nose and our flowers and their stems. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, green, and brown. And I'm gonna be doing my, fl my flowers and my nose with red, and then I'll be using green and brown for my stems. So I'm gonna start with green and brown and tackle my stems first. So I just have green and brown, about equal parts of both on my brush, and I'm just gonna create these fun stems. I don't need to do anything fancy. I just need something that's gonna connect my flowers to my hat. <laughs> so you can have fun with putting you know, these as bright or as dark as you want. I may end up later putting a little bit of a, a second coat just so I can see them in front of the, um, of the hat, but this is looking pretty good right now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna load it with a red paint and I'm gonna paint a base coat on my nose. And again, I don't need, when we're doing these um, base coats, the making it perfect is not a necessity, but I am conscious about making sure that I paint everywhere it gets a, a, an entire coat. So even if that coat isn't perfect, I do wanna make sure that I close off any little gaps between like the fur and the nose. And you know, even if I can see my pencil still underneath it, that's okay. But at least I've got a first coat on that particular area. So that works out pretty well. Now I'm gonna just tackle my, my flowers. And again, I know I'm gonna see my, my pencil through them, which will be taken care of on future steps. 
but this just gets me going. And of course, again, you could do little daisy type of flowers, you could do little roses, whatever type of flower, or you don't even have to do flowers. Maybe you do, you know, nothing coming out of the hat. I just thought it would be kind of neat having the red color kind of carry throughout the painting and give it a, a good balance, but you could certainly have, you know, anything that you'd like or keep it a little bit more on the simpler side. And I'm just kind of painting this in with my red color, getting around those edges, make sure I cover the pencil, even if I can still see it, covering it allows me to have a better shot at m making it complete by the time I'm done all my steps. So there we go, we got that in there. And then I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Actually, I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more green just to um, get that to cover or this little crossover point, yeah, there we go. Now it's in front of my my um, my hat, there we go. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for the hair, the collar, which will include the underneath this part and the ruffles, and then the ruffles down at the bottom. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, green, blue, purple, white, and black. <laughs> so all my colors except for brown. What I'm gonna be doing is I want the transition on the hair and the ruffle to be similar to a rainbow. And the colors of the rainbow in order are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And they are created in that order based on like the prism of colors. So red plus yellow makes orange, yellow plus blue makes green. So we're taking our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. And if you mix those two primary colors together, the one in the middle is a, called a secondary color. And that's where the full spectrum of the rainbow comes in. So a little bit of color theory for you here today. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be creating, I'm gonna do all my ruffles in my hair with a circular type of brush stroke, which will give me a lot of texture, circular type of texture that will create that curly hair and the ruffles. And I'm gonna do it in that order. So I'm gonna start with red, 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 and then I'm gonna be using red and yellow on my brush to get orange and we'll progress that way. And we'll come back and put a grayish collar underneath here. So I'm gonna start with red paint on my brush and I'm not worried about bumping into my hat or my fur in here or my um, shirt area in through here. So I've got my red on my brush and then I'm just gonna start creating this curly type of effect in through here and right about when I start to reach that ear, now I'm gonna go down towards, I'm gonna bring my red down here. So I'm gonna use all these colors in sequential order, so that way I don't have to wash my brush a lot and I can get this, um, I can use the red that's on my brush with new yellow and I will get an orange color created on the fly. As I'm going in these ripples, I ruffles, I know that I don't have a lot of room to spare. They're really kind of narrow. Um, so I'm just putting these real kind of thin layers of, or uh, as far as height goes, of these um, little ruffles in through here. So, but you could certainly, if you don't feel that you have room for all the colors, you could certainly just pick one or two of the colors and, and go from there. And you can bring it up into your um, shirt portion a little bit. So there's my red. Now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush is I'm gonna pick up yellow. So I have red and yellow on my brush, which will create an orange type of transition from my red to my yellow. So I'm gonna bring this orangey tone right about in through here. I'm gonna do the same thing down at the bottom, just kind of overlapping with my dirty brush. I have yellow on it, so it's overlapping this red a little bit, creating a little bit of an orange tone. I'm gonna do the same thing down in through here. And now that I've got a little bit of an orange tone, and again, I don't need much, just a little tiny bit in through there, I'm actually gonna wash and dry my brush to get to my yellow, because I know that that red is pretty powerful. So I washed and dried my brush and picked up yellow. And I'm gonna, of course, cross it over the orange section, but I also wanted it to be pretty darn vibrant, so I, I didn't, 
want to have my brush too dirty and I'm picking up more yellow to get down in this vicinity and you can see the transition happens really nice and fast and I'm not putting a real wide section for the yellow down here because again I know that I've got um, three more colors to go so I'm just kind of cautious about how how far down I'm bringing this you can even just in these little areas just kind of tap your brush along the way so then yellow plus blue is going to make green I'm not going to wash my brush I'm just going to pick up green so I have green and yellow on my brush which is going to make a nice transition from my yellow to my green and I want to save room for my blue and my purple so I don't need to go too far over there with um, with my green and again just picking up green on my dirty brush and going to give myself these little squealies down in through here overlapping a little bit with that overlapping the yellow a little bit because I know that that's the transition between those two is going to give me a yellowish green so I'm just kind of bringing this down and I'm running through wet paint I'm running through wet yellow as I go through the process down here just going to put little bits of my green in through here so we can see it but again so I still have room for my blue and my purple and then what I'm going to do without washing my brush if actually I'm going to wash my brush I feel like I have a lot of yellow on there so I'm going to wash and dry my brush to get into this blue so I'm picking up blue if you didn't have a ton of yellow still on your brush you could have probably gotten away with it um, without washing your brush but I felt like I had too much yellow on there and you can even if this isn't blending the way that you want you can always pick up I just picked up a little bit more green so the green going into the blue wherever your you know your visual preference is if you want it more blue make it more blue but know that we will be doing another layer on top of this later to get these um, colors to pop and have a little bit more dimension to them so if they're not exactly as you had anticipated at this stage of the game don't worry about it because again we've got that extra step that we'll be doing and again I've got my blue going on down here and I'm just looking to make these look like little ruffles you could have them striped or polka dotted you could make them really into whatever you want well I was when I was looking for kind of inspirational references for clowns to create this painting oh my god there's polka dots there's stripes there's plaid there's <laughs> so many different color combinations and variations that you can create to make a clown costume so if you want yours all you know pink polka dots make them all pink polka dots you can really just have fun with this so now I'm going to go into the purple without washing my brush and I'm going to do the same thing just kind of bringing this over crossing it over into my blue a little bit so it has somewhat of a transition crossing it over into my fur a little bit bringing it down a little bit in this fun exterior way you could even bump it off your canvas if you wanted it to look like you know the hair was so big it didn't stay within the viewing range it went out of the canvas or if you have some of your pencil marks left after you get done this step you can always erase them with a regular eraser and then I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of my purple down here and then once I've got these colors on my ruffles and my hair I am going to wash my brush and create a gray color that I will use as the fabric for the collar portion that's going to be underneath the um, head and between the head and the, the ruffles on that collar so this is looking pretty good in through here I'm just finishing up this little section with my with my purple and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush that looks pretty good so I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to create a gray color I'm going to take my white and a little bit of white a little bit of black and just make myself a medium tone gray and I'm going to use this maybe a little bit lighter than that I'm going to use this as the base coat for my top collar part and all I need to do is just color in this section it doesn't I, I'm going to have um, my ear overlapping it I'm going to have little fur overlapping it so again just using it as the base coat for this particular area you could reshape anything that you needed to reshape those ears if you needed to and as I'm getting in towards the edge of the collar where that red is if I bump into a little bit of wet red because it's not dry yet that's okay again 
lots of steps to go. We're going to have highlights and shadows and all kinds of other stuff. So don't worry about that edge being um, perfect, especially if you run into any wet red. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadows all on all of these objects. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The dominant colors I'm gonna use are brown and black, but in certain circumstances, I might need to tap into one of my base coats, and if that happens, I will do that and I'll let you know. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. I'm going to start um, underneath my hat with a little bit of brown and black on my brush. So my hat is casting a shadow on my hair. So I'm going to be using these two colors to give myself a little bit of a shadow right underneath that hat onto the hair. I do know that I'm going to be having a highlight on the edge of my brim later on. So this is really just kind of giving me a, a little bit of a dimensional element in that hair. So it looks like it's underneath that hat. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the head and ears of my dog from the hair. So I have a little bit of black and brown. So I'm just kind of going up in underneath that, the colorful clown hair and giving myself kind of this uneven type of shadow. So it looks like the hair is casting a shadow on my dog's head and ears right in through there. I'm also gonna put a shadow down between my ears and my head. So I have, again, just a little bit of black and brown. I'm gonna just create a little shadow in through here and in through here. And I don't need to do much. I'm just kind of giving myself the separation between the head and the ears. And now I'm also gonna put a shadow underneath the head on the collar. So again, black and brown are what's on my brush. And it just tuck a real dark shadow up in through here so it looks like we've got some good um, some good darkness underneath there and just kind of putting a little bit in through here as well I want to blend it out so it's not just a super firm shadow in through there I can have a little bit under this ear I'm putting a tiny bit of water on my brush right now without reloading my brush with paint. So this way I can kind of spread this shadow out a little bit. You could certainly use a little bit of um, liquid medium and or you could tap into that gray color that you um, initial, initially used in that area. So actually I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that gray um, on my brush just to get this to blend just a little bit more in through here. There we go, that works better for me. And we'll also, again, be having a highlight um, at the edge of this cloth later. So if your shadow isn't perfectly blended, that's okay because you've got um, a, the, the highlight that will help to, to rectify that. And I'm just putting a little bit more in through here underneath this head and making sure that it kind of blends out a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go into my... Um, my bottom area in through here. So again, just picking up black and brown on my brush. I'm going to do a real um, dark kind of shadow right underneath these, the, the ruffle, the ripply, ruffly part. And again, you could use a different brush. You could use a different combination of colors. I, a lot of times, will use um, black and brown for my shadow making because I feel like I can get it to be transparent, which means I can see through it and it allows me to, in essence, just make um, that color, whatever's underneath, look darker. You can take this color, like the, the yellow, if you wanted to, and make a darker version of it if you wanted to. That will help um, with a more smooth transition into the shadows, but if you've got the ability to kind of fade out or make those shadows transparent like I do with liquid medium you could certainly just use my method and then I'm going to put a couple in through here these will be a little bit contour shadows so I'm going to use a little bit more brown on my brush so I'm going to have a little bit of a contour shadow in through here this is going to make it look like the clothing or the outfit just kind of dips in from the form of our little um 
puppy underneath. I'm picking up yellow on my dirty brush because I want this to blend in a little bit more. So I picked up a little bit of yellow on my dirty brush just to get that one to blend in. And again, I'm gonna have my um, highlight in a little while that will help to um, solidify this, this form that I just um, am creating in through here. I'm gonna do the same thing a little bit on this left-hand side, but I can use the remnants on my brush to create this one because I don't want too much in this area. So just maybe a little bit going up into that cloth of the, um, of the outfit. That looks pretty good. Now I'm picking up more black and brown to go in for a nice dark shadow underneath this uh, cloth on the boots. So I'm just kind of riding right along that ripple of the, um, of the fabric. You can even put a pretty good one underneath here on the surface that the that the puppy is standing on. So something like this and just as dark as you want. You could even go pretty almost like black in these little crevices underneath the ripples in through here. Maybe a little bit more brown or faded out a little bit as it's going towards the rest of the shoe. And then I'm gonna put a little bit under the tail and then on the surface of the um, whatever he's standing on, <laughs> the table, the floor. I'm putting um, a pretty dark one right underneath the tail in through here. And then I want my tail tip to look like it's lifted off a little bit. So I just pull this um, away from or disconnect it from the tail itself. And then I'm just putting a little bit of water on my brush in order to fade this out into um, blend it into the, the surface a little bit. I picked up more water and again just kind of rubbing this out so it it fades like that and then I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow underneath here so again I have my dirty brush that I'm working with so whatever the remnants on my brush are I'm using that plus a little bit of water on my brush and that's allowing me to get this um, more transparent type of a shadow as opposed to the real dark shadow that I put um, right underneath the cloth on that uh, on the on the boot itself so this gives me more of a dissipated type of shadow if you wanted yours to be really firm you could certainly make it as dark as the one that was um, close but I'm making mine a little bit more uh, dissipated I'm gonna do one over in through here as well so I can have it looking like the dog itself is kind of casting a shadow onto that surface. So I'm really running out of paint, so I'm, I'm picking up a little bit more with, with water. I just wanna make sure it's nice and thin enough for me. And then you could, if you feel after you get this shadow done that you want it darker or lighter, you can make it darker with another layer or you can make it lighter by adding whatever your base coat is that you used for the surface, you can, uh, or for the background, you can certainly use that as a, um, as a lightening agent for it. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the hat and the flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, white, red, yellow, and maybe some brown too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some form on my hat by adding a highlight on the, the top edge of it as well as the rim of it. And I also want this top part to separate out from the rim. So I'll be adding a highlight on the rim with like a, a gray um, to create that kind of platform top of it. And I'll be also creating the roundness of the front of it to make it look like it's got some form. So this will all be gray and white. And then when I get to my flowers, I'm gonna be doing a little bright center and we'll have some little shadows in it and some fun colors. <laughs> I'm gonna start with uh, my, my hat. I'm gonna pick up black and white on my brush at the same time. So I have about equal parts of black and white. And what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of give myself a plan of sorts. So I'm gonna give myself kind of this oval type of shape up top in through here. Oh, a slender oval. I don't want it to come down too far. So just a little slender oval in this area to give myself just the information that that's the top, this is gonna to be the side, and this will be the rim. 
I'm going to do that same color combination, black and white, to give myself the, um, the idea of where I want the, the rim to separate from this top part. So maybe somewhere in through here and then bring this over in kind of a curved line like this. And I can use this grayish color to just kind of give myself a little um, hue of gray on the top part of this rim in through here. So you don't need a lot of white, just a little bit is gonna give you this kind of dark gray appearance, but it will um, allow you to see the difference between that rim versus the top. I am going to um, pick up more white paint on my brush right now to give myself the um, kind of a bright edge in through here, something like that. That'll identify the the real close edge to the viewer. And if you needed to, you could also uh, clean up the edges. So I feel like I might need a little bit of black on my brush to just kind of clean up this underside in through here. Oops, that was a little yellow on my brush. Um, a little bit of black just to clean up this underside. So if you felt that you needed to do that, feel free to do so, or even the edges over um, on the side. So if, you're, if your base coat was a little rough around the edges, now's the time to go ahead and clean that up and make any little um, cleanliness brush strokes that you need to do. On the top, I'm gonna um, put again that black and white, and you could create a gray color if you wanted to, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I've got black and white on my brush. I'm gonna start right about here, and I'm gonna give myself this curved type of um, brush stroke on this front side of the hat that's going to make it look like because I've got it curved it's going to give the illusion that that is the front edge of the um, of the hat and you can do this as many times as you want I'm leaving it black down here uh, just to make sure it looks like that part kind of dips in and then I'm going to put a little extra white on my brush up here to give maybe a little extra highlight or shine to the tip of that. And of course, you could elevate those highlights all you want. I just picked up a little bit more white and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna to move to my flowers now. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and red and I'm gonna give myself a little um, kind of shadowy area in between my petals. So just a little brown and red and I'm outlining like this, a little circle in the middle, uh, brown and red is on my brush, just kind of outlining a little circle. This is just giving them a little fun dimension uh, with little shadows in between my, my petals. Not necessary, but if you wanna give them just a little something, a little extra special you know, dimension, that, that works. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. If I needed to do anything on my, on my stems, I certainly would. I think I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of yellow and um, add a little highlight on my stems just so they look like they're nice and finished and they get a little bit of attention. Now I'm gonna pick up yellow and white and give myself a fun little center to my flowers. So just dotting in yellow and white in the center of those flowers, allowing for some of that uh, brown edge where I've just put the circle to remain visible. And of course you can make these as bright as you want and just popping in a little bit more white to make them a little bit brighter in through there. And then I'm gonna uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up red with a little bit of white on my brush. So red plus a little bit of white just to give myself a little highlight on some of these petals again go with where you're comfortable. If you want yours to be really bright, maybe you even make like a, a pink color that you could use as your, as your highlight color. You could, you know, you could mix the, the red and the white and get yourself a nice pretty pink, whatever works for you, or that purple would work with white. That would make a nice pretty pink. If you wanted that, that would work out as much as you want it to be bright. And now I'm gonna put one little final touch with yellow. I just picked up yellow. I'm gonna do this like a sunshine kind of accent on the outside edge of these flowers. So just, I'm going on kind of the left-hand side of them, just giving them this little kind of sunshiny outline to them. This is not a, a step that's necessary, but I thought it was a cool little accent that would add some 
vibrant life to it and kind of color coordinate with the outfit itself. And then we're going to be using this, uh, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you get this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the eyes and the mouth. I know I said I was going to use my medium brush, but I changed my mind. I'm using my small brush, so you could certainly switch your brush if you want to. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a base coat for the eyes and the mouth, and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of detail on them. I do want my cute dog to look like its head is a little bit crooked, so I'm going to have my eyes tilted a little bit, same with the mouth. I'm going to start with some black paint on my brush. I'm going to come up. I would say maybe about an inch, inch and a half from the top of my nose and then out about an inch on either side. I'm just going to create a circular type of shape for the eyes. And again, you could, if you're opting to do a different type of dog, you could certainly make yours bigger or smaller, or maybe you want yours more of an illustrative cartoon type of look to it. So feel free to adapt yours whatever way you want. I'm going to go ahead and come over here, just give myself my other eye before I start making little marks around it. So the bigger the eyes are, the more it's going to look like a young little puppy. The smaller they are, the more it kind of looks like a, more of an adult kind of dog. Uh, but you could certainly adapt yours, like I said, however you see fit. I like to give mine soft edges, so I uh, the eyes, so I don't have really clean lines around the edges of them. I'm keep picking up just a little bit of black. I'm going to have a little um, kind of marking on the side of this uh, little fur in through here. So just bringing a little bit of that black in through here. This is just some, some fur markings. I'll do the same thing over on this side, something like that. And then I'm going to, while that's kind of drying, I'm going to... Um, go down towards, actually I'm bringing in some of these corners of the eyes too. I'm going to go down to the, um, to the, the mouth, just bringing up little dark marks. There we go. That satisfies me. I'm going to bring in a little bit more black down in this center area underneath the nose and then just kind of bring out this cute little pouty mouth in through here. And I'm hardly using any paint right now. I'm going to actually put a little bit of a shadow underneath this nose too while I'm here. I just uh, picked up a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of get this area to be nice and dark and look almost like a little shadow underneath there. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go back up to those eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up, I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm picking up a little bit of brown paint to give myself the colored part of the eye. So when I do this, I'm not going all the way to the exterior. I'm just going to give myself this little crescent area in through here, leaving a little dark pupil. I'm going to do the same thing over on the left hand side. And then what I'm going to do is on my dirty brush, I'm picking up a tiny bit of white and brown. So I'm going to get the color part to go a little bit lighter on this right hand side. So just a little bit lighter on this right hand side, something like that. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of blue and white. So I have a little tiny bit of blue and white on my brush and I'm going to create a reflection on the top port part of the eye of what would be the sky or the blue hair <laughs> or, or something. So I'm just kind of making sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush. And this is going to cross over part of the pupil, part of the brown part, but I'm not going to bring it all the way to the top um, dark area. So I've got my blue and my white, and I'm just giving myself a, a crossover mark like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this left hand side. It's kind of curved and I just give it a little crossover like that. And once I've got that on there, you can kind of manipulate it as much as you feel is fit. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint and just give myself a couple of little twinkle dots, maybe one in through here and here, and then maybe one in through here and here. And of course you can fiddle with those all you want. And then I'm just going to put a little bit more information around the eyes. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown 
and white, so brown and white. And this is just gonna give me a little bit, or maybe a little bit more white than that, just a couple of light areas around the eyes, just so I have a little bit more expression that is visible to, um, you know, to our viewers. <laughs> We're gonna be adding lots of fur and stuff around in a little bit, but this just kind of helps get me started with where I want you know, little little marks and stuff. So that's looking pretty good. I don't really need to do anything more to the mouth. We're gonna add more fur on it in a little while, but um, as far as the placement of it and any details on it, I don't really need to do anything else right now. So we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute eyes on there, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, red, yellow, white, and if I need any black, I'll let you know, but I'm, I'm thinking I might not need any black. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be creating a custom kind of burnt sienna rust color that I'll be incorporating with the brown in order to give this um, puppy's fur like kind of a chestnut type of a look and then I'll be adding uh, so that'll be kind of my my first pass for the darker type of fur then I'm going to put some lighter fur around the muzzle area as well as the in the eyebrow area and maybe some tips to the the ears too and then I'll come down and hit the tail with a, a couple of those colors as well. We will be finishing the nose and whiskers on a future step so as you're doing this just know that there's a little bit more to go on this. I'm going to first create my custom well, I'm actually making two custom colors. I'm making a custom rusty color like this, and then I'm gonna make a light, lighter color for the highlights. This I created by using red, yellow, brown. Spin that together until you get a nice chestnutty color that you like. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow in there, and then I'll add a touch of white to it to get it to have good opacity to it. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of white paint and it's gonna get me into the shade that I want, maybe a little bit more white. I have I have wet or uh, dry black paint underneath here. So you might not be seeing the full true color, but this is the true color over here. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this color, just a little bit of it, and I'm gonna add yellow and white to it. So I add yellow, and then a bit of white and this is going to create a lighter like more golden blonde type of version of it that I will utilize for the highlights on my on my fur. I need a little bit more yellow and white to get it into the color that I was looking for. There we go that looks pretty good. So now that I've got my two custom colors I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I'm going to start with my dark stuff first. So I'm washing and drying my brush putting my palette in a good location, washing, drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up my rust and brown on my brush at the same time to start. This is gonna be creating my dark areas. I'm gonna put um, my dark areas are coming out from underneath my hat. I am creating this second layer of fur in order to make sure that I have full coverage. I can also start to pull out these little fluffy edges to the fur. If I want my puppy to look like it's got longer fur, you can also cross it over in front of um, the clothing. This is the time when I am really kind of dictating all these little edges to it and making sure that my edges are cleaned up. So I'm doing another layer in through there. That looks pretty good. I'm picking up more of my brown and my rust color. So I'm gonna bring it coming out this little hat area in through here. I'm also gonna put some of this in the bridge of or where the muzzle meets kind of that forehead. So I'm gonna pick up more of my rust color right now. You can, I'm gonna pick up rust and brown, but I just, I'm kind of alternating them at this point. So rust and brown, and just bring this into that center area of the muzzle in through here. And this, again, it's, it's a time to make sure that you have a second coat of paint on all of your areas. So I'm gonna put a, a little bit of it uh, in almost everywhere. I know I'm gonna have my lighter stuff on the front of my dog, so I don't necessarily need to 
um, put this second coat there yet because I'm going to be using a different color to do that. But as I'm working my way through this step, my goal is to have a second layer of paint on the entire fur portion of my of my painting where I want it to be lighter I'm going to be using my lighter tone but right now I'm still just in that rust color and brown and I'm just kind of alternating those two colors I'm going to put a little bit of it down in through here so again just rust and my my brown and I'm mindful that these are going to be my little edges so I'm just allowing myself to now make sure that I close off any of those little those little pockets of unpainted it, um, unpainted canvas and make sure it looks like I have a second layer on my fur and I'm not missing anything. I know that I want this to be a little bit darker underneath here that works out for me in through there and I've got a little spot in through here that doesn't have paint so we're just going to make that a little long piece of fur. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my burnt sienna or my rust plus a little bit of that light golden color that we created that light tan I'm going to transition into my lighter area. So I want lighter fur on the bridge of the nose and through here. And I, in my head, I know that I want these areas to really look like they, um, they transition well together. So I'm just working my way towards the light. The fur on the nose is going to kind of dro droop down um, this left and right. So again, I've got the rust plus the light color on my brush right now to start with this process. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, just dro drooping it over that muzzle area and then bringing it down these sides. So rust plus my golden color, bringing this all along the edge of my my eyes and through here. And I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot. I'm just really concentrating on getting a second coat on here right now. And then in a minute, I'll add some nice fine tuned little highlight details to it, but when I'm doing fur, I'm really always consciously thinking about what direction is that fur um, traveling or what direction does it lay on that face. So on this little puppy, I've got the fur kind of coming back that nose and then on the side of the face, it kind of comes down and the, 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 um, the fur isn't super long on this particular puppy. So I'm just going to give it these short brush strokes. I'm picking up more of my light um, golden color right now so I can put some little eyebrows on in through here or eyebrow areas <laughs> to give it that cute little curious look, maybe a little bit in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit on the um, tips of the ears as well. So right now I've got mostly my light color on but I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that rust again. So right now I'm kind of just popping back and forth between the light golden color and the rust just to give myself these lighter areas to accentuate maybe that light fur is you know being coming out of the of the hat a little bit and you maybe you want yours really nice and you know that chestnut look so you just keep adding that color onto it until it feeds your painterly eye maybe you want your your puppy to be black so you start with black and add some gray as some highlights that's looking pretty good now i'm gonna start really adding just the the lightness around the face so i'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel i'm gonna pick up my golden color plus white on my brush. So that's that light golden tan plus white, about equal parts. And this is where I'm just going to um, accentuate the, the motion of the fur on, the, on this um, nose part. And again, I don't need to do much. You could even use a smaller like bristle type of a brush to give you these um, more individual type of strands of fur. But I'm just using this brush and just continue to reload my brush with a good amount of paint and using it in a directional type of brush stroke. I like it when I can see the various colors layer upon layer. So if if I want to have that that nice fluffy look to it, I just really start from the dark and work my way to the light, allowing for the visual effects of seeing the colors underneath to help me with 
um, giving it lots of dimension. So I'm just kind of going over in through here. I'm going to add a little bit more under this eye in through here. I might even add a little bit more of that rust color as well. But right now I'm just going with that golden color plus some white on my brush, giving myself this nice light area. Perhaps the, you know, this nose is sticking out a bit more than the forehead and it's catching a little bit more light, but you want to make sure that everywhere connects well. So if you're putting a light area on, just make sure that you connect that fur to its neighbor. So if you don't just want light fur here and not here, you want to have it kind of transition into it. I've left a little bit of darkness here and here to show the dips in the face, um, but you could certainly, you know, modify yours. I'm picking up a little bit more of my uh, rusty color on my dirty brush just to transition this a little bit better into this forehead so you can see the kind of the curve of that forehead and then I would just kind of keep playing with it so as I'm bringing you know this to its final resting place if I want a little bit more of that rust color I just put it on my brush if I feel that it would benefit me to put a little bit under the eyes I'm going to put a little bit under the eyes you know you just keep tweaking it until I feel like I want a little bit above these above the eyes. You just keep adding these little bits of, of fur because every dog can have a different color pattern to it. So as long as you know you're satisfying the idea or thoughts of you know what you wanted your cute little dog to look like, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be the same exact color as mine. Uh, m my goal is just to get um, these areas to transition well so I can so I can see the difference so I can see kind of the form of the face but the color pattern doesn't have to be the same as mine. I'm going to put a little bit more lightness with my gold and white on my brush on the tip of this ear in through here and then I would definitely let it dry. Sometimes it dries a little bit darker than you had anticipated. I'll let it dry. See if there's any additional little marks I want to make. Like I know I want a little bit of lightness up underneath this eye and through here. And if I want to make any more light, you know, lighter or darker areas, I certainly will. And then we're going to be using, uh, we're going to use this, we're going to we're going to use uh, this medium brush. Oh, I forgot that tail. Let me, let me hit that tail first. We'll use this medium brush for the next step, but I'm going to hit that tail. All we need to do for the tail, I'm going to just wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of that brown and rust on there. And then just kind of pop it on this bottom side like this. And again, just looking to do a second coat. So nothing fancy in through here. This is just the, the brown and the rust. Then maybe a little bit of rust on the tip up in through here. And then making sure all of my pencil is hidden. And now I'm picking up a little bit of that golden color just to give myself just a little fluff on that tail. And now I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush. And I'll be using this same uh, actually, I'm going to use my small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away. Take out your small brush if you can ever stop. Fur is tough for me to stop because I love painting it. Uh, you can put this uh, medium brush away, take, or take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our nose and we're going to paint some whiskers too. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are brown, red, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of my nose. I'm going to color it in with red paint. A second coat will add a highlight and we're going to add some white whiskers. So I'm going to start with my nose. I'm going to start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush and I'm going to paint the bottom edge of my nose with brown paint so it looks like there's a nice shadow at the bottom of my of my nose something like that. and I'm going to use my finger apparently <laughs> to get that on there then I'm going to pick up red paint and get that brown to blend in so we've got some good dimension on this nose that looks fabulous I'm going to wipe my brush off pick up a little bit more red paint just to make sure I have a nice second coat on the entire nose. And while that is drying, I'm going to do my whiskers and then we'll come back and put a beautiful highlight on this nose. That's looking so cute. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put white paint on my brush. 
with a little bit of water as well. So I'm thinning out my white paint with a little bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna do lots of little whiskers on this guy. Um, and I do this in a quick brush stroke. So I'm going along the edges, I'm pulling it out farther than the um, face itself. So this is going to allow it to look like they're just little tiny whiskers coming out. You don't need to bring them very far. Um, and if you're finding that you want them to be more evident because maybe your, your fur underneath isn't dark enough, you can certainly add a couple of darker um, whiskers in there so you can so you can see them a little bit better but I'm using them primarily as um, the the cute part to make the, to make the this little puppy's face look nice and fluffy bringing a lot of them out on these edges so you can kind of see them on top of that darker background and then I'm just kind of bringing a little bit more up in this muzzle area so that looks super cute to me next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my highlight on oh you can also add a little on this little uh, front part of the mouth too so I'm going to add just a couple more on this little front part of the mouth just so it looks like it's kind of um, draping over his front little lip in through there. Yeah, now that's that's looking super cute. And if you want it on this little chin too, <laughs> I can't stop putting the little cute fluffy whiskers on. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red and white at the same time. So just a little bit of both on my brush at the same time. This is gonna create um, a highlighted area on the nose. So I'm going in this top portion of the nose, creating almost like a lighter version of red right in through here. You don't need to go right at the tippy top. I'm kind of going a little bit away from the tippy top and then I'm just gonna blend it out into the regular red area. I like to use kind of the side of my brush um, to do almost like a scrubbing type of technique to get it to blend, but you could certainly just um, use the tip and a little bit more moist of paint if yours isn't blending like mine is. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off and pick up a little bit of white paint and give a really sparkly part on the nose. So I'm gonna just kind of take it from here and then pull it in a curved kind of um, direction as if this is maybe like the reflection of something on the nose, so something like that. And you could certainly wait till it dries. If you want it to go brighter, you could certainly come back with an even brighter mark on that. And then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your nose and your whiskers done, you can put your small brush away. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the main part of the shirt and the boots. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, red, brown, white, and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a seam or an opening in my shirt. We'll put some buttons on it. We'll also put a second coat on the yellow portion. We're gonna put a heel on this shoe or a sole on this shoe. We'll put a second coat of red and some some highlights and shadows and then we'll magically be done. <laughs> I'm going to start with the shirt. I'm going to be using yellow, uh, yellow and a touch of white paint on my brush. So mostly yellow with just a little bit of white paint. What I'm really looking to do at this point is just kind of add a nice second coat onto my um, cloth I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight in certain areas, so that's where the white comes into play. So let's say I want a, like a part to bump out. I can put a little bit extra white, and that's gonna give me almost the appearance of the, the um, cloth bumping out for either a contour on the body or a ripple. I do know that I want in certain areas, a second coat, like I want a second coat of my yellow on top of this um, shadowy area, so I just make sure I do that. I have my edges also where I can still see my pencil, so the white paint is gonna help to um, give better coverage or better opacity over those edges. So you can, if you don't get it on one shot, you can certainly add another layer to it, whatever, uh, however many times you need to layer it, or if your pencil is that evident, you might be able to 
erase it if it's on the outside but I'm really just kind of get, going for a nice second coat so I have a little bit of form in this and so I have good coverage so I'm using my yellow and white to create um, to create this dimensional element to it and you can use as much white as you want or as much yellow as you want the yellow is going to be very transparent which means you can see through it so if you want to have those spots that kind of bump out and um, look like they've got a little bit more substance to them that's when you bring more white into it or if you're going for something like here where I just want this to uh, blend into my shadow I'm using more of my yellow so you can use those um, that color combination and if you needed to or wanted to you could certainly bring out some of the brown to if you felt that you wanted this to look any smoother or blend any better you can certainly do that so while that's drying before I put my seam and my buttons and stuff on I'm going to let me just get this edge a little bit better in through here I'm going to go down to my boots so my boots are going to um, be red, but I want a little black sole on them too. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up some black paint and I'm going to give myself just whatever kind of heel on your shoe you want. You might want yours different than mine. You might want yours the same as mine. Whatever is um, speaking to you, feel free to do. I'm just going to kind of give myself a... Um, a black line at this point and then I'll put maybe a little bit of a of a heel I'm leaving just a little bit of room between my shoe and the bottom of my canvas but if you find that yours goes all the way to the bottom of your canvas just roll with it no you know you don't need to make it, it, it the same as mine I'm gonna bump out a little piece of the the sole in the front of the shoe like that just again to give a little bit extra dimension to it and then I'm going to put a little bit of a heel let me move my canvas so you can see it and I can get to it I'm going to just bring a little heel down in through here and again you can make yours into whatever way that you want and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush just reshape that a little bit there we go that looks good to me I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put red plus a little bit of brown on my brush. So mostly red with just a little tiny bit of brown. I'm gonna start at the back side of my shoe and through here with the red and the brown. So that way it almost looks like the top of the shoe has a little bit of um, shadow from the, from the shirt. I can even just bring it down right in through here. I'm gonna do the same thing with that remnants on my brush just right in through here. And then I'm just gonna pick up red to finish the, my second coat of the shoe. I just ran into a little bit of wet black, which is okay. Let's paint that right in there. We're gonna have an extra shadow at the bottom part of this shoe, which is a happy accident, as Mr. Bob Ross would tell, teach us in his classes. Uh, and then I just keep picking up red paint and finishing out this second coat. And while this is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of my Sure, I'm putting my second coat of red on in through here, and this is where you can clean up any of your little edges. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and I'm gonna work on that shirt. So washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put a little seam down the, um, kind of the center, but maybe a little bit to the right of the center. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of brown and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna, let's see, where do I want this to go to? So I'm gonna have it kind of come in down in through here and maybe just we'll just kind of ripple it up like that that looks pretty good I'm going to get it to kind of blend on this right hand side picking up just a little bit more yellow paint to get it to blend into the cloth on this right hand side and then if you wanted to you could pick up which I'm going to do but you don't have to I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint just to give this little extra darkness up at the top where it's meeting um, the roughly part in through here. And if you felt that you wanted any additional little dark areas down the seam, you could just bring little, little spots of black. And that, again, just kind of adds to a little extra bit of um, dimensional element. Now I'm gonna uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up just black paint. So just black paint is gonna give me my buttons. I'm gonna have three buttons. You could certainly have as many as you want. I'm gonna do my center one first, so that way I kind of stay on track. And I'm just gonna do 
black buttons with some uh, little decorative stitching to it. But again, you can make yours into whatever you want. There, you know, this is your fun painting, so you can really have fun with even the simplest of elements like buttons. <laughs> so I'm just free handing some some circles. I'm doing them black. I'll, I'll come back in a minute and put some um, the little stitches in the middle as well as a little highlight. Your buttons can even be different sizes and different shapes. You could have a square button. You could have a round button. Mine clearly are going to be one is going to be a different size than the other, but I'm okay with that. You can have them crooked. Maybe you have them in a diagonal formation as opposed to one on top of the other. So again, creativity is is the probably the funnest part about painting because you know you can certainly make things look lively and have life to them, but when it comes to making you know all the little details and decisions when it comes to the the decorative elements of it, you get to do that all on your own. You don't need to follow somebody else. You can just create it on your own. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put my highlights on my boots and then we'll come back and put some highlights on my stitches. So, or on my buttons. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna tackle it the same way I did my nose. So I'm gonna pick up red, about equal parts of red and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna add a highlight on the uh, top side of my boot somewhere in through here. So I'm blending the red and white on my boot to make this lighter version of red. So it's giving me kind of this uh, light red slash pinkish type of look to it. And I'm just blending it on the canvas. So it, um, it takes on a nice neutral, natural kind of uh, blended color with that shoe. And I'm picking up a little bit more red just to get this to blend back into the darker portion of it. I'm putting it on the top so that makes the viewer understand that that is the top of the shoe and just blending it as much as I want. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other shoe, but again, I don't have much on this shoe to go, so I'm just gonna kind of put a lighter area right in here. I don't um, need it to be a lot of an area because we're only seeing a little bit of this shoe, maybe a little bit on this left hand side, something like that, blend it out. And now I can add my bright area. So I'm picking up white. I didn't wash my brush, but I wiped it off on my paper towel and add a very bright area right on the edge of this toe or this shoe. So pretty solid line in through there. And then I'm going to bring it back in this curved manner to tell the viewer the shape of that shoe. So something like that. And again, if, if you want yours brighter, you can certainly wait for it to fully dry and then come back and add that, um, that real bright white on top of it. This side over here, I'm just gonna see a little kind of piece of the edge of it. So just a little, little white in through there and then blend it out just a little bit. I don't need to blend it out a lot, but just a little bit so we can have that bright portion. And then I might, I might elevate it a little bit once it dries, but this is pretty good for me as is right now. I'll wait for it to dry to see if I wanna do anything more. Now I'm gonna add my decorative elements to my buttons. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm putting a little bit of white paint. I'm banking on this still being a little wet. If yours is not a little wet, you could certainly pick up white plus black, but I'm thinking mine's still a little wet, so I'll get a little streak of the black as well. And if not, I might pick it up. So I'm gonna take white paint. I'm gonna start right in through here and just give myself a little curve like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this one, little curve like that. I need to pick up more white paint because I'm running out and I'm gonna take and curve it like that. Now I'm going to just pick up a little white paint. I'm gonna put four dots. One, two, three, four. And I have to count when I do it. <laughs> Yours, again, don't have to necessarily be symmetrical. I'm working wet on wet here, so yeah, I'm gonna get the uh, little gradations within my marks. But if you want, if you don't want that type of look, you could certainly wait until they dry. So now that I've got that, my little holes, what I'm gonna do, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up white and yellow because when my mom used to do stitching, <laughs> 
<laughs> she used to always try and color coordinate the thread with whatever the cloth was. So I've got white and yellow. And again, this is wet on wet, so it's going to streak through. I'm just going to do a little kind of X mark in the middle of my button. So a little X. And I'm hardly touching my canvas. You might want to use the smaller brush as you approach this step. That'll be up to you. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the hair, the collar, and the ruffles. I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white. And I'm going to approach it the same way that I did the first layer, which is I'll be doing all my reds, then all my yellow orange, then my greens, then my blues and my purples. I will finish it off by putting a nice bright highlight on the edge of this collar. I'm going to start with red and white on my brush at the same time. When I do this, I don't want to overpaint it. So I want to have that bottom layer of that color still evident. All I'm really looking to do here is add highlights. If you, if you felt that you needed a whole nother layer with the red and stuff, you could certainly do that. But right for me, I'm just looking to make sure that I have everything painted in, maybe a little bit of a highlight here and there. You don't even need to go all the way over towards that right side. If you feel that the right side might be a little darker, you can leave some of that, but I want some of the ruffles to kind of pop out. So I'm gonna do it almost all the way across. So again, right now I just have red and white on my brush. I'm just gonna kind of give myself, and you can use it to overlap your other elements if you want that to happen or to hide some pencil. If you can see any pencil underneath, that's a great, this is a great step to help eliminate those type of um, unwanted m marks perhaps, or you could even uh, use it to extend it and make it bigger. Now that I've got that done, I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up yellow and white. I know I have my orange area, but I have a little red on my brush too, so I can just kind of overlap this. And again, I'm just looking for a little accentuated um, highlight in through here. So yellow and white is where I'm headed and just kind of wiggling my brush over this area. Maybe I've got a little couple of little whiter ones in through here, these smaller ruffles. You really don't need to do much. The, the hardest thing is to just not overpaint it. The, um, the added little highlights are going to make it nice and bright and look like it's got some good dimension to it. But if you start over blending, it might just look like a solid color, which isn't necessarily bad. But if you're going for a rainbow type of ruffle like I'm looking to do, that might cause a little confusion. So now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up green and white. So you'll probably notice a common theme headed at what we're doing here. So just green and white and adding these little bits of you know, little curly Q marks of sorts and just trying to keep it in the in the right area. Again, to just not confuse the viewer. And if you feel like, I feel like my brush is overloaded, I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and pick back up my green and white. So at any time, if you feel that your brush is overloaded, feel free to just wash it and dry it. You don't have to muscle through like I do sometimes with a dirty brush. I tend to be a little bit lazy when it comes to washing my brush, but you don't have to be that way. I do like my colors to talk together. So there is a, there is a method to my, to my reasoning, but um, it stems primarily from me being a lazy brush washer. <laughs> but it seems to work out for me. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm gonna just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up blue and white and blue and white are going on my brush and you can be heavy with heavy handed with it especially when you're getting into these larger areas i really just want mine to you know take on this fun three-dimensional look and sometimes you need to go especially since i'm in this brighter area or this bigger area i seem to have gone um gotten pretty excited when it came to adding the blue on there in the first layer so I, because it's such a big area i can really feel free to you know put some extra white in there. So blue and white, I'm going on my brush, get myself 
into this little area a little bit and again just kind of tapping it through i don't i'm using a circular brush stroke but uh i don't i'm not doing it through the whole thing i'm just kind of tapping where i feel i want that little bit of a highlight so blue and white and also i'm being conscious about checking for unpainted canvas so this is my step to finish out these little areas and make sure that they're all painted. Washing and drying my brush and I'm putting purple and white. I suppose I didn't need to wash and dry it, but I felt I wanted to, so I did. So purple and white are going on my brush at the same time. And again, giving myself this vibrant purpley area, making sure it looks nice and finished, overlapping maybe a couple pieces into the, into the blue, making sure this all works the way that I want it to. No pencil marks showing. Oh, this looks so cute. <laughs> Purple and white back on my brush or still on my brush. Just making sure again, finishing this off. And again, this is the, the little edge here. So if I um, wanted to overlap into that into that shirt a little bit more, now's my time to, to make those marks happen. And if I wanted to extend it out further, make sure my pencil is covered, now's the time to do that as well. And then just getting this last little area down in through here. And then we have one last little step left to go and it's gonna be with our small brush. So once you've got all of your ruffles and your hair done, you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so I suppose I should finish the last step before I go on to the final step. <laughs> so I realized again that I missed this little edge of the collar. So back out with the medium brush and, a, and, and white paint is gonna finish this off. So I'm putting white paint onto my medium brush. I really just want a little highlight in through here. So I'm going white paint, adding myself a little highlight, and then I blend it back into that, um, that gray area. So what this is doing is, again, it's pulling the edge of the collar out from underneath the, um, from underneath the dog's head. It's, a, it's giving the visual information that this collar is sticking out further than the head. So it's, it's just a little visual, um, trick to give that illusion. That's why I started with the, the um, gray color and now I'm putting this white on here that I can blend back into the gray. And it's again, providing me with the illusion that this, this edge of the collar is sticking out farther. So now that I've got that done, <laughs> I am now going to go on to the final step with, with the small brush. So once you've got your collar fully done, you can uh, put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the final step. <laughs> All right, so now we are on to the final step. <laughs> this is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush with black paint. I'm signing mine in the bottom left today. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a super cute, costume wearing dog and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.